Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 and the third part of this experiment where we take a look at what would happen if you destroyed Manchester United. So, so far in the last two parts of this experiment we've seen them drop all the way down into League 2. That's three consecutive relegations for the club see how they've managed to get on because there were signs in the last episode that they were beginning to improve. We have a look at the schedule of the senior squad just to remind ourselves and then drop back to last season. You can see they were starting to get draws, they got a few victories as well and it looked like they were finally beginning to find their feet um, and didn't actually come bottom of the league in that season. They finished down in 22nd place. So there were definite signs of improvement there. They've still got that sand pitch, but they do now have rich finances. I don't think they'll ever get rid of the sand pitch. I don't think the game um, has the limitations where they force a club to have a grass pitch. They just force them to have a good quality one um, and under soil heating in the Premier League. That's all it makes them do. It doesn't make them actually have grass. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on over the next two seasons and if they manage to stabilise or if they drop all the way down to the bottom tiers of the game. So we'll go forward now one year into the future. We'll see if Gianfranco Zola is still in charge. I mean, he survived two relegations, so I have no idea how he's managing to do that, but maybe it's that charming smile that he's got in that picture that's doing it. But we'll go forward, see how they've managed to get on, which players they've brought in, and at the end of this episode, we'll also take a look at where the old players from Manchester United, the likes of Paul Pogba, um, Sanchez, Mourinho, player people like that, where they ended up in this experiment as well. So let's go forward one year in time. Well, we are now a year in the future. We're going to start by looking at their schedule. And as you can see, they've already started off in a brilliant way. Their pre-season for once went very, very well. And then they managed to beat Port Vale 2-0. They even got through against Nottingham Forest in the Carabao Cup. Beat Bradford to make the third round of that. Um, and were actually unbeaten in their first seven games of the season, which is really impressive. They did then lose to Crawley away, but another home win, away loss, home win, away loss, and then an away loss against Barnet as well. Knocked out the Carabao Cup by Huddersfield, um, not too surprising there really. Um, but doing well in the league and in the Checker Trade Trophy, a couple of wins there as well, and then a really bad losing streak with just a draw to break it up. They did come back with even more wins, winning the Checker Trade Trophy second round, but their league form really, really struggling at this point. Through in the third round and in the quarterfinal, beating Warsaw 3-0 as well. So there could be some cup success for United. But their league form really poor and then knocked out in the semi-finals by Rotherham. So that's a little bit unfortunate. They did well to make it that far. But that form in the league really, really struggling at a certain point. They did manage to get three wins on the trot at the end of the season. But if we have a look at the league table for that season and drop back then you can see they finished in 12th place now that's not too bad there were a lot of teams very close together there were 10 points off uh fourth place but i think sixth would have done um so there are only five points off the playoffs um and they were a good 23 points clear of relegation so they look like they may well have established themselves as a league two side now and that they have finally bottomed out in the lowest tier of professional football or league football rather um, in England so interesting that that is the point they got to I think I seem to remember Arsenal also bottomed out at this point when we did this experiment last year so maybe this is a point where they have had enough time to sort out their finances and bring players in because if we look at their profile you can see that sharp decline but they've still got their 20,000 seat stadium sand surface their reputation is now up to regional so that's improved quite a bit they've got rich finances as well but Gianfranco Zola has now left and they've got Steve Sidwell in charge. Um, Captain now Frankie Kent. I'm not sure who that is, but he does have an in-game portrait. So if we go in, he's 25 years old, um, worth a little bit of cash. Joined them a couple of years ago now, actually, from Portsmouth. Uh, pretty established player at this level. Played quite a few games in League 2 and League 1 as well. Um, so I'm sure he'll be able to do the job for them, but didn't really play much last season despite being captain. He only had six games, so I'm not quite sure how he managed to become the captain of the team. Um, but if we have a look at their landmarks, we can see going back one year, they upgraded their training facilities. Chris Solly appointed as vice-captain. Um, 
John at Marquise as vice captain as well. I don't know when Steve Sidwell came in here because I can't see him. Obviously, Zola was in charge for a while. If we, how do we have a look at the managers? There it is, managers. Um, we can see that Gianfranco Zola were obviously in charge for nearly three years before getting sacked, which is a little bit unfortunate, but he did have two relegations. So he should really have been sacked well before then. Only a 24% win rate as well. Um, and then Steve Sidbell's been in for about three months, but he's got a 50% win rate in his eight games. So certainly doing better than Gianfranco Zola was. Um, Gary Mills had a 0% win rate, and Gary Waddock also had a 0% win rate, which wasn't exactly good so maybe when Zola came in and managed to win one in four games they were actually quite happy with that but he did ultimately leave and it's a shame because they were doing reasonably well in the season but I suppose that poor downturn in form halfway through really seemed to hurt them quite badly um, and if we have a look at their general information as well um, not too much extra information there um, no new favoured person oh Lee Evans is their favoured personnel now a uh, 27-year-old Welsh centre midfielder. Been there for a couple of seasons. Did very, very well. That's the best kind of rating we've seen for a very long time. 12 assists. Having joined from the Championship, that's a big step down. Two leagues. He was always going to be a star player. Um, but really, really getting a good rating there. And in the facilities, we can see they do have poor training facilities. They had superb ones before because they were renting them. But they seem to have got their own now. Basic corporate facilities and poor use facilities. They've never done anything about that either. Um, and they've still got some nice undersoil heating for their sand pitch, which makes no sense whatsoever. We did strip all their affiliate clubs out, and they still don't have any of them. If we look at their transfer history over the last season, they did spend nearly a million pounds, which is quite a bit of money at this level. Um, big players coming in. If we sort it by fee... Uh, Ethan Ebanks Landl from Wigan, a right back, costing a quarter of a million pounds, did reasonably well, dropping down from the championship. It's good that they're picking up quite a few from the championship. And Ryan Haynes is another example of that. This one, a left back, 200k coming in, um, actually came in from the same level, but getting a nearly seven rating. So the players they're bringing in now are players fit for this level. A little bit of money going out, quarter of a million. And so far this season, they've already spent 400k. If you have a look at their senior squad and the valuations within it, you can see that they've got a few players now worth over a quarter of a million. So they are starting to build it up. A few different uh, nationalities in there as well. But ultimately, they're building a decent side. And I think that given they're now rich in finance, it won't be long until we start to see them climb up the table. It'll be interesting to see how far they go. So let's go forward one more year and see if they manage to get promoted back into League One. Well, here's the schedule for that season in League Two. You can see pre-season, not too bad, uh, but knocked out the Carabao Cup by Sunderland. Although on penalties, it's not a bad result. They then had a patchy start before starting to pull together the wins in the league. Um, nice run of three games there, and then a huge run of five straight wins, including over Stokes under 23s. Knocked out by Southend in the FA Cup and lost in the Czech Trophy, but still got through to the second round. Brilliant unbeaten run here. This goes on for quite some time as well. They really found their form. Look at that, just one defeat across about 20 matches. Uh, won in the quarterfinals, but knocked out in the semi-finals on penalties by the West Brom under-23s. And then their form dipped a little bit before winning a few games right at the end there. And if we have a look at the league table, you can already see there that they finished the season as champions. 87 points and on goal difference. Eight extra goals over Gillingham. Um, won less games, so they needed that goal difference as well. But managing to win at the league title, just their second season in League 2, and they are now back up in League 1. So that is really, really quite impressive that they've managed to snap back so quickly um, and get promoted as champions. So they'll be in League 1 next season, and this could be the start of a big, big turnaround. Steve Sidwell, still in charge, now has a league title with Manchester United in his um, trophy cabinet. Frankie Kent, still the captain. Did he manage to play more games this time? That's a question. Um, and he did 31 games. Not a great rating, though, it has to be said. Uh, key player Joe Riley, 25 year old English left back who we took a look at before. Um, 
good average rating there, 7.05, joined for 170 k um, Not too much change in everything else. It's all exactly where it was. Their facilities, again, basic core facilities, basic training facilities. Uh, so I think they've improved because they were poor before. The youth facilities have also gone up, and they now have a youth level of four. So money finally being pumped into the club's facilities as well. And if we have a look at that transfer history uh, for the last season, then we can see they spent 18 million pounds so when they said they had rich finances they were not joking they signed will ferry for nearly 18 million what on earth is that about he's come down from wigan in the championship where he was where he's on loan there he's actually a premier league youth player played 32 games only got a 6.87 rating that seems like a massive massive ripoff for the club that's most of their transfer budget gone on one youth player um, Warren Jones in there as well, 1.4 million, his 18. They're signing young players, doing what a real life uh, manager would do actually in this situation, picking up young players and hoping that they develop into top quality assets. But that's a huge amount of money to spend. And I imagine the fact they haven't brought anybody in yet is possibly because they've breached financial fair play. Um, 550k came in. If we have a look at their landmarks, um, you can see here that they did get that promotion raised their youth category to four and then eventually became champions and if we look at that managerial rating for Steve Sidwell now he's actually improved his win ratio to 52% and has a league title in the mix so if we look at their competitions page uh, you can see obviously all these Premier League titles if we scroll further down then they have their first ever League 2 title. I don't think they've ever been this far down the football pyramid. They won the championship a couple of times um, but this is their lowest level competition victory I think so at least they've got that and they're back to winning ways it's not Manchester United unless there's trophies in there so very very good for Steve Sidwell there getting his managerial chops um, and reasonably and looking like a reasonably good club once more you can see Will Ferry there the highest valuation player but quite a few players now they're actually dropped down look there are a lot more than this over 250k but I suppose the longer they're in the team the more likely they are to lose valuation. So it'll be interesting to see what they do next season, especially if they can't bring players in because of financial fair play. Um, but right now, they look like a pretty good team. Now, if we have a look at some of the big players that they let go at the start of this experiment, you can see Paul Pogba now at PSG, earning 300 grand a week, doing very, very well there, no doubt about that. Uh, De Gea, where did De Gea end up? He also went to PSG, so PSG snapping up quite a few Manchester United players when they were released on freeze, and he's having an incredible time um, down in Paris. Other big players, we've got Lukaku that we can take a look at. He's a Real Madrid um, and doing reasonably well there, getting quite a lot of goals, very high average rating as well. Uh, Juan Mata, he's ended up in Guangzhou in China he's 34 years old now but has been there the entire time very very high average rating um, other key players I'm struggling to remember United's key players to be fair which is quite embarrassing given how much money they've spent we can have a look at Ibrahimovic um, if he's still in the game he's now an assistant manager but if we can have a look at his past career stats and you can see he actually went to Southampton on a free and did really really badly there so a mixed bag for some of the United players that left if we have a quick look at Mourinho as well um, if we can even find him where is Mourinho normally he would show up much quicker than that there he is Jose Mourinho I think he might have retired you know where did he go Bruce Bell Chelsea uh, Man United and that's it I think Jose Mourinho has retired at 57, possibly even before that, he didn't have another job after Manchester United. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If we look at his staff history, he retired in 2017 when he must have been 52 years old. Why on earth would he retire? That doesn't make any sense, but there you go. So that's what happened to some of the bigger players from Manchester United. Obviously, Sanchez hadn't joined um, in this save, so we can't take, well, we could take a look at him, but I assume he's still probably at Arsenal. No, he was still at Arsenal, but then left on a free to PSG. So PSG must have one of the best squads in the game. How has that happened? Barcelona must have let him go. How much for? Um, £103 million. He has had a few big money moves. Lamar's there, Pogba. 
team. Look at the bottom, they've got Son there. I assume there's a couple of Champions Leagues in here. Runner up, they haven't actually won the Champions of League uh, titles, a lot of French Cups and Coupe de la Ligues. Um, so there you go, that'll be it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed that. Next time we are going to go forward much further than two years, probably about five years, to see if they've managed to rebuild their position in the Premier League. It may also be the last part of this experiment, but do drop a like on the video if you would like to see one more part of this, otherwise I can move on to a different experiment. Make sure to subscribe when the next video comes out in a few days' time. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter or support the channel on Patreon using the links in the description, but until next time, see ya!